and I will see you on the flip side. Peace. All right, ladies and gents, boys and girls, I got my man Chris Hollywood in the house. Now, why Chris Hollywood? Chris is German by birth, and he is a Hollywood reporter interviewing A-list celebrities for the German media. So he's syndicating his interviews and sending all that good stuff that happens in Los Angeles back to Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. Also, Chris is a consultant for actors and actresses not only how to survive in Hollywood, but also how to thrive. And today, we're gonna to talk about dating, right? That's Chris? right, that's, that we should. Dating, and why dating in Hollywood is relevant, and then how you can take some of the lessons learned in, in, in dating in Hollywood and maybe apply them in, apply in to your own life. Now, but before we jump into that, do me a favor, hit the like button if you like Hollywood and Chris and um, my stuff. Hit the notification bell, subscribe to my channel as this will allow us to grow, answer all of your questions and bring you more relevant content. One thing is I recorded two videos on dating, um, which you can see here. And I have also have one more interview with Chris coming about life in Hollywood, if entertainment and how to get into the media industry is interesting to you. Chris, what, would that be fair to say? Like, did I summarize that up correctly? Is there anything you want to add to that real quick? No, absolutely. That's correct. I mean, yeah, besides my interviews and, and writing, I, yeah, I try to consult people who come from Europe to, to Hollywood who are usually accomplished already but they're trying, they're coming into this big shark tank now. And um, yeah, and I, what I do is I relay information I got from other people who kind of made it, or even if people didn't make it, I kind of tell them why. And, and, right. and that is pertains to jobs and that, to private life, but especially to dating and, and to avoid certain kind of situations when it comes to dating and work. Yeah. And that is something, you know, which I always try to come up with anecdotes, what other people told me. And so really you're coaching people along the way. Console, coaching yeah. is so like... Yeah, it, it, it's what it is. It's, so, it's what it is. So, yeah. but, but that's what you, what you help people yeah. with, right? And so let's jump right into that. I think the premise here is a lot of people know beautiful girls go to Hollywood and want to be actresses. Guys, of course, too. But, you know, like, I, I feel like since we've talked about this in the past, the Hollywood industry is still very male dominated. It's a different game for guys than it is for girls. So why don't we take it from here and why don't you tell us a little bit from the perspective of like what to be mindful of is if you're a female and then we jump into the male perspective as well. Yeah, I mean, what I've seen over the years is that when, when you're a female coming to Hollywood, and even if you have accomplishments and I'm mostly from, if you come from Europe, you already have done something sure. before. And uh, it's mostly very hard to... So having done something means like having a portfolio, portfolio of yeah. movies, having, maybe acting, model, yeah, modeling, modeling yes, shots. Exactly. And then they come and they are very disappointed to find out that mostly when they go in and they try to show their stuff, they're not being seen as an artist or, right. you know, they are seen as somebody, as a get, you know, what they call it, as a get. As a get. A get. And, 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 <laughs> and so they're, you know, it's, it's disappointing. And, and I always say, you know what? Just expect it and be happy if somebody, you know, wants to tell them off <laughs> in right. a very nice way without burning bridges because that's very important. It's a very small industry, so you cannot tell them, you know, fuck off. And for well, that guy, really might be the. Well, and, and let's pause you here for a moment, right? People may not think about this contextually. There is only one Hollywood in the world, right? And that's in Los Angeles. Think about your industry, right? How many times have you had a run in with a co worker, a boss, or perhaps like a higher up? And you're like, hmm, I. Yeah, I know I shouldn't burn bridges. Maybe something happened you did, right? Like, that's a lot more challenging to iron out in an industry that is really just in one city. Yeah, you film around the world, but the key makers, the stakeholders, everybody sits in your city, Chris, in Los Angeles. Yes, and they, they stay and they are, and they are gonna, you're gonna come across them again and again. And so, so, so then learning how to navigate. Navigate, that, yeah. So now I, yeah, and I try to relay anecdotes, successful, how women went around being invited at 10 o'clock at night to some producer's house and um, how- And still you, stay in touch with that producer, yes, right? Yeah, without actually having to do stuff they don't want to do. So um, one uh, actress, German actress, who was, you know, 
she, she came and she knew what would happen because she heard about the guy who casted her and who wanted her for the movie and so she had a, somebody else told her what to say or to get out of that and yeah. she has told me that story and I'm relaying that story usually when I'm being asked about it she pretty much made the guy think that he is really in love and interested in this. I want more than that. And Play, yeah? Yes, yes. Whew. Yes, and the guy got scared enough okay. not to uh, do anything. So you scared the, she scared the player yes. with like a real love story. Yes. She, so she wants the whole cake, the whole cake. <laughs> right, and that, and that worked, she said, and that is, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, and the problem, the biggest problem is, it's, it's there is a certain power imbalance, right? And right. They have, Mostly older guys who are, you know, in the industry for longer, especially when it comes to who casts you, who gives you the jobs and so on, you know, and of, of course that's true for male actors as well when you're young and upcoming. But as I said, most of the time, you know, I run into the female actor, actresses or models who try to become actresses and this makes it even harder for them because they are just seen as a commodity and then you, how do you get away from that and how do you... Uh, you know, how, how, how can you show your craft? And that's very Okay, so let's pause this for a moment, yeah. right? Like as a man or a woman, right? I mean, I guess like men are seen less as a commodity. Yeah. But more so as... But, but somebody who can, who can get you something. And that's and that's the that's the flip side, right? So... I yeah, see. So, they, so I mean, I, I guess not everybody is like a 60-year-old Oscar-winning multimillionaire with a big villa. But I mean, there are people even on the smallest, I mean, you, you are like the assistant of some director, you are, right. I mean, you could be Drake's gardener, you might have a shot. Right, right, people, and because you're Drake's gardener. And you can get girls, into the, I mean. That the, sounds like entourage, right? Like that, where. But, <laughs> that, the entourage is, that is the most Hollywood LA thing there is. A lot of, there are a lot of people that hang on, honor, I call them hang honors, you know. Yeah, right? of so course. So they are around and they, they try to use their connection to somebody. Hang uh, honors. Hang honors, hang around. Hanger honors, but um, yeah. So they that's so they so when you have something you know to offer, not maybe you just have a decent job, right? And then you mail and you have the same issue sometimes. You don't know why is somebody interested in me? Is it really because of me, or is it mostly because they hope they can get something? So that's okay. Tough. So 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 my my as an outsider, my viewpoint would be right like. The industry is already known as being superficial, right? So wouldn't you think you set yourself up for failure if you're going in there and thinking, hey, somebody really truly likes my work? I mean, or am I being dramatic? Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, you have to kind of do the balance between being really jaded because that's yeah. also not good. Yeah. I, I yeah. think you gotta be somewhat optimistic and hopeful, but you gotta be really realistic. And it's, okay. it's, it's a superficial heart industry and, and you know, you have to, you have to count on get, being disappointed in people. And that's, that happens a lot. And that's true, like work, and that's, that's also true for dating and, and relationships. And I think the, the people who have, I have to say it's sad, but I mean, the most successful relationships I've seen, which lasted longer than a couple of years, is the ones who kind of, they like each other, they are actually into each other, but they also have something to offer. You know, both sides have something to offer. and they also So maybe pause for a moment and explain that. Have something to, so both sides have something to offer. Like expand on that just for, for a second. Well, I mean, whoever has like a job or has a good position or maybe stability is something the other person needs or wants. And they make as long as they make it clear, so you don't you don't have to guess. I mean, why are you in this relationship? You know, because okay, I like I like a 25 year old girlfriend, and oh, I like to actually have a stability, or I like that you work for Disney and you can actually get me this and that. I mean, there is there is this kind of. I wouldn't even call it arrangement, but I would so call it... So it sounds like mutual, a cost, cost mu benefit. Mutual, mutual beneficial relationship. Yeah. Those are the ones, I have to say, which has gone... There's some, of, there's some 10, 12 years, I know people have been together that long. And that is not... That's long for Hollywood. That is very but, long for Hollywood. But, well, let's pause this for a moment, right? This sounds maybe to the, to, to the westernized heart, it may sound contrived, right? Yeah, because we, we think sometimes in these Disney fairy tale storytelling ideas that everything should be love right but if we're looking at countries like india where arranged marriages actually function because you have four interested adults in like marrying kids for success and it actually works so then why would we browbeat or look down upon a couple that decides well you know maybe I do want the stability that this guy can bring, but I also bring him fun, you know, like it's it's this. So I, I don't think there's anything wrong with it per se. 
if it's consensual, if that makes any yeah, sense. Yeah, I mean, if, if you have two adults, and that, I, I, all I can tell you is that has worked better mm -hmm. than the the hope that, oh, you know, many times I've seen it over and over over the last 20 years that somebody young comes in and actually is able to get somebody older and powerful out of a relationship and thinking, okay, now I'm the next person and then usually that doesn't happen because the guy has five, six other possibilities doing that or they actually get married but she literally will end up the same way what happened, what she did to the other, <laughs> to the first wife will happen to her. I mean, that is literally like almost, well, you can bet on that. Mostly. Well, and that's a fallacy people do, right? Like, oh, he's going to give my wife, his wife up for me yeah. and this will never happen to yes. me. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, with me, everything will be different. But I mean, that, that happens everywhere. I mean, right. everybody thinks, okay, when I'm coming in, it's going to be like, like an edge sketch. This is like the guy will completely change or the woman will, woman will completely change and that's not going to happen. I mean, okay, so then, I mean, like, I, I feel that, but on a more practical side, right? Like knowing this, knowing that maybe it's a mutually beneficial relationship, it sounds a lot like setting expectations and learning how to set them is what we should talk about next, right? right. Yeah, you, what your expectations for what you want, what you really need in life. I mean, what you as an individual, man or female, yeah, need in life. Need, yeah. And that transcends from being a normal, mortal human being into Hollywood, right? right? Yeah, that, that everybody is human I and mean, everybody yeah. has some needs and, and, and needs are different than wants. What you need is something which really you cannot live without for too long. And then and we're talking about whether you are like a family person, whether you need empathy, whether you need to be free to travel with your friends. I mean, those, those things actually matter to a lot of people. And yes, so let's pause this a, a moment. Like, so you just said needs and wants. Needs are things like empathy, closeness. If you want a family, that's a that's a need. If right. your partner doesn't want a family and you want kids, yeah. you're doomed, right? I mean, right. let's be honest about it. So those are needs, but what are wants to you, Chris? Well, wants are most of, most of the stuff which are like, you know, something which makes you feel good. Like, you know, oh, I like to go out to dinner there, or I like to go on vacation there, or I need to drive this car, or I need to have my partner do this sport with me, you know? Yeah. It's, that, it's, that people should be flexible. Yeah, that, that's a compromise. Of course, you should actually kind of give up stuff for the other person once in a while, but I mean, that's... Well, every, com every yeah. relation is a compromise at the end of the day, yeah. right? And you're giving something up for yourself in return in hopes to make the union better than... Right. And that's, that's true and that's true on this basis or it's true in any other, you know, kind of relationship. And, yeah. And so the problem is how do you actually, first of all, are honest enough with yourself and then honest with the other person? And how do you get to really know the other person for real? Because it's not only Hollywood, right? I mean, and you're making it, it's a bubble, right? But we all live in a bubble. We live in a social media bubble. Everybody is show, portraying themselves as well, not maybe as somebody who they're not, but let's say they just leave out all the crap part of their life. And just... Well, and that's a, that's a fallacy of social media, yeah. right? And everybody knows it too. I mean, most people don't post the stuff, the setbacks, the losses, the hardships on social media, right? Right. Even though I think they should, sure. because I think that tells more of an honest picture, right? And so I feel like what you were just saying that may be in Hollywood, but I think it's everywhere. Yeah, that, that people portray only a sliver of the reality of their lives. So then how do you circumvent around it? Or what have you seen people use as tools? Oh, what, why is this done first of all? It's something we should maybe establish first. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think people just watch other people having a perfect life. And I think you, if you, and you know your life is not as perfect, but at least you get accolades by other people posting something really cool as well and I right. think it's this need to be liked and to be also out there and I and I think the and I think we talked about that before how do you get how do you cut through the BS you know and you actually spend time with that person for real you know and longer than like a weekend or just really like a fun boat trip or I just go six seven days on a vacation maybe or you know don't move in right away but right. I just, just in a certain way you know figure out what the other does when he is not really on his best behavior and, and and I think that's such an important point, Chris. I feel like from what I'm hearing, from the questions that I've received and from my friends and acquaintances, there's more and more connection. So you connect with a hundred people, but you only end up meeting three of them, right? And that in itself seems like a challenge to me, right? But then the only 
in my opinion, and I think you just said that, the only way to really get to know somebody is spend time with that person, right? right? And spending time with that person is not like doing highlight reels like at the zoo or Disneyland for a couple of hours at the time. It is like going maybe on a short trip, right? Like maybe like a five, six day trip or figuring out what that person is like when they're not on right. their best behavior. So, yes. But, but you still, most people are, how do you get somebody to commit even like to go on vacation with you for how do you get somebody to commit to meet you for coffee yes you know it's like the, the tendency is like to have people don't even want to meet people because then they have to actually admit that what they are posting is most of the stuff is bs and or at least that's not them who they, who they are so what you then say somebody who wants to network and meet the male or female gender in hollywood and outside of that bubble would be better served to use avenues where you can connect one-on-one -on -one with people outside of swiping, liking, right. commenting. So give us an example maybe where people connect in Hollywood and where you've seen that that transcend into real life. I think we, talk, uh, we, uh, we talked about prior to this about you know how as a normal guy where you know yeah the, the like man, a normal guy who, like how, like how do i get this how do i get you know this person who is usually would only date like you know some rich guy or directors or something and um, i think you, you figure out how do you meet people in real life and you most of the people i know who are couples you know who are on the same i call them on the same level yeah they meet doing something they're also interested in like acting class for instance that's something that happens acting class yoga class yeah fitness studio or maybe they, i don't know maybe they go um, running oh hiking right running so i think the best thing is like you find a common denominator yeah exactly then the other person really sees who you are at some point because you actually spend you know spending time with them around them so it's different than being texting the entire time so 100 percent, and i think that's so true because it's preposterous to think that you can date somebody as like a normal guy or woman who is you know like you date a guy who was a successful uh, oscar nominated director right right um yeah. or writer that that doesn't know you right? right i mean like you can't start dating that person through social media no. and vice versa you know like i mean like you maybe i will not be dating uh naomi campbell uh, here anytime soon i think in order to get somebody who is not easy to get or right. somebody you really who is outside of the regular channels you are you know you're in you actually and regular channels meaning like your social media stuff maybe you're dating apps, right right exactly like, yeah i think you have to you have, you have to find a new strategy you have to go old school i think you have to figure out a way how to meet people how to how to meet people in person is what you mean in person you do not write the same you know stupid messages, messages yeah, yeah. and then because they're getting those like 50 times a day and that's what i hear on some my attractive. successful let's let's say that again successful people people who especially in your industry yeah. are very visible yes and they get whether they're really you know amazingly good looking women or you know, or amazing looking men or success very successful women or say very successful men, older men they get a lot of messages and people are trying to get stuff from them i think the way they get kind of interested in you if you are not this pursuing not the same person like what everybody else is but i think you figure out how you can actually meet up with this person somewhere and just don't chase you know don't be just portray yourself i mean get them be interested in you by being yourself by not being one of what everybody is you know this social media version of themselves or whatever so and i would like to highlight that what you just said i think chasing a person in general seems to be not the best way to build a relationship, right? Because I do feel like it's a two-way street and you will find out if that person eventually responds. But if you're chasing, sending a million messages and you're being ghosted, I think you're wasting your time. Right. So then working on, if I hear you right, you know, finding out like how you can get into that acting class or how you can get into that yoga class to meet, you know, the people that you want to meet. Like if, if yoga is your passion, you know, if it's remote control it cars, like... it's is 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 maybe more challenging. I, I, and, I'm not, and I'm not and I'm not advocating stalking here. That's, I want to put that on. I'm just saying, you know, if you have a chance to meet somebody or even just to keep leave some impression, it's don't be what everybody else is. And that's 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 usually the only chance you have. I would say, you know. Yeah, that's fair. And then um, 
Yeah, and another, another problem is if you are like what everybody else is, you kind of have to also keep that up, you know, so you're not being who you really are when you actually finally meet somebody. And that's true for women, men, and relationships. So that's why in the beginning you have to kind of, you know, keep up this mass of what you're having. And, and so then are you proposing people should really try to be on working more authentic? I mean, of course. And you, you, you got to actually, I mean, if you, you know, I, th I think it just starts to stand out. It's like people having no tattoos nowadays, you know. It's, it's, people actually say, oh, you don't have a tattoo. It's just like. <laughs> That's so interesting, that, that, really. That becomes, that becomes interesting for people nowadays. Okay, wow. And I, I think, you know, I mean, yeah, and I mean, but. It's, and I thought I always was like tough, the most. But, but you're also, but you're also having, you know, you're also, um, your, your rivals are everybody who is on Instagram, who has this great Instagram, who has this portraying themselves as really that successful person. And so how do you find this niche? How do we, how do you have people discover you? How do you actually figure out how do I meet a person I really, really desire and how, what, what do I want to do? So that, it's hard. I mean, we live in so, a so, so then give us like one or two pointers here. Well, as I said, I think the pointers is like, I think when you have a chance to meet somebody, when you're there, when you see somebody, and I think you have to get out. You have to get out of your house. You have to get out of your social media cyberspace and maybe go to events. I mean, I think, you know, go to the Comic Con, go to see if you can get into anybody. Maybe somebody can take you to an after party or to some kind of events or become a member of Soho House. I don't know. Just do something where you actually have a chance to meet people outside your bubble. Right. And you know what's funny? So, yeah. it, it's funny what you say, right? Because somebody I think who's extroverted has an easier time doing that. I mean, we can't dive too deep into this introversion, extroversion thing now. But I mean, obviously, like, I don't know if humanity is split evenly between introverts and extroverts. But of course, I would think that an introvert has an easier time swiping left and right than going to an event. Right. So especially if you're introverted, you need to take that extra energy and figure out one, what it, what is it that I like? And two, then going out there and doing it, right? right? I, for example, volunteered at the Black Chamber of Commerce here in San Diego for their biggest annual event um, because I've always wanted to network with them and a friend of mine just kind of pushed me a little bit. So I showed up and the people I met are definitely gonna be some of the people you're gonna be seeing in future interviews because it was an easy way for me to connect and I typically bring the energy that I like to you know, that I like to receive. So it's just something to be mindful of. If you want to not be one of a hundred thousand liking some person's story or swiping left and right on these dating apps, then figure out a way how to meet more interesting people that are like-minded through events or through, through, um, through sport activities or whatever that may be, or hobbies, whatever that may be for you. Yeah, I think that's, that is the key. Once, and then figure out why it's important to you to get somebody or to be with that person especially or if it's really about them or if it's about you and, and you know make sure you got your needs covered first and then and if you actually figure out this person is somebody for me make sure that person is not fronting it's not the, right and that's that's another issue I think you know we we have to be dealing with because there's so much menu on a card dating nowadays where you literally like I want this this, this, this exactly, from this, that yes, person yes, and this yes, yeah yes. And, and even if you're thinking about contextually about mentorship right there's typically speaking not one global mentor who teaches you the best at life no the, how to be the best at life but there's something I can learn from you in the entertainment industry maybe you can learn something from me about rapping in German or like eating healthy oh god knows what that may be right I think that a la carte dating is a huge challenge nowadays because I think we build our ideal person together kind of how we you know are looking at other people's like Instagrams yeah, like thinking oh my god you know like every every moment they have in life is wonderful yet you see a very curated experience mm -hmm. So, and then I think like, let me just summarize real quick what we said. So setting your expectations right, knowing your needs for sure and not compromising on that and being flexible on your wants, having the expectations of, hey, maybe I'll give a little up of this, but I get a little for that and vice versa and being realistic about that, communicating that. And then I think, um, being out there. Being out there and being authentic, knowing that social media, knowing that even the dating apps are not necessarily authentic and learning how to be more authentic and having maybe more forward conversations. We all struggle with that, you and I included. I mean, right. 
you know, like I have this internal governor that every once in a while says like, maybe I shouldn't put it out there. Maybe I should be guarded, but it's the opposite in my opinion. Yeah. And then one thing I wanted to address before we do a wrap is ghosting, right? Like ghosting has to be very real in Hollywood because the, the, the questions that I've been getting and the people that I, the, the friends and acquaintances I have say, hey man, it, it, it tends to shake out this way that I talk to 30, 40 people, I end up maybe meeting two or three of them. That's a lot of people to talk to, to have a human connection, right? And then like they fall off the, the bandwagon. So is that something you've seen? And yeah, I mean, and what, what surprised me, it happens, you know, it happens to, I mean, I'll, I'll talk to some supermodel and she says, I think, I mean, do you get, she asked me, did, have you been get, gotten ghosts before? I said, yeah, here and there. Yeah, me too, and I cannot believe it. And why don't you just tell me that I suck or that I'm too demanding? And I said, yeah, because nowadays you don't have to anymore. You have a la carte dating. You can actually don't have to deal with somebody being complicated or not being exactly the right fit. Instead of saying, you just go on whoever is on wait list number, number one, two, three, and four. And that's people just are cowards, I think, more or less, you know? It's a brave new world. And like, if I hear that, the one thing I would say is the one thing I would tell you is if somebody's ghosting you, don't waste your energy on them, right? Right, exactly. I mean, it, it never feels good to be ghosted, but no. it's a reality these days. And having the mindset that if you are on dating apps or if you're dating in real life, you will get ghosted. Yeah, you will. Yeah. Of course, you never have this real connection. You do have the cyber connection. That is, makes it just this, easier. Not the real connection, but the cyber connection. And then even if you connect with somebody in real life, yeah. keep in mind, they may have 5, 10, 15 cyber connections going on at yeah. the same time. I mean, you probably almost have to count on it. You know, that's, right. you're, still in, you're still in this trial period, you know, and, and that's... And so people get very distracted. I think, from what I'm hearing, yeah, we may be superficially more connected but on a deeper level it's harder for us to really get to know somebody yeah you know i think all these things that we discussed like you know setting expectations knowing you know your self-worth um knowing what you need and knowing what you want um dealing with ghosting efficiently those are some of the things we highlighted today but is there any last things you want to leave our audience with well, I think I think you have to kind of measure your expectation to the times you live in, and don't get really down on you know when you are living in a cyber world that no things will happen you know and make sure you are happy with what you do. Mm -hmm. You know, follow your goal. I mean, it's such a it seems like such a, like a cliche, but follow your goals because that's the only way how you can get happy. And then if you are like a happy person that you stay in person, that will attract people you would never think would would be attracted to you because they feel oh that person knows what he wants they're stable they're kind of you know going their their path and that's true for women for men because i mean also men are attracted to to women who kind of know what they want and doing their stuff and i think vice versa and then i think that gives you a, even a bigger chance to find somebody actually who's on your wavelength who yeah. likes you for what you're doing what you are and you like yourself because you're actually doing what you want whether it's getting out of whatever you're in and becoming more creative or yeah, just follow through with what you were actually wanting to do in life. That's, that's a attractive. That's, that's a that's a very profound point, right? I'll say this. There's a great book by Dr. Viktor Frankl, who was a concentration camp survivor in Nazi Germany. The book is called Man's Search for Meaning. The people in lieu of being killed by blunt force or simple starvation or something like that, the people who survived the concentration camps had a north star of what they wanted to see and experience after they got out of the concentration camp. It's a dire thing to wrap your mind around, but the book is called Man's Search for Meaning. So knowing what you want, right? And you may be saying, Chris and Ace, well, that's easy. I want like the most beautiful person in the world. But no, knowing what you want out of life and what you want to contribute to life and to society and to humanity. And when you're out there doing that, I think no matter if you're in Hollywood or no matter if you're just a normal mortal that goes to a nine to five job that, you know, cultivates a hobby outside of work or family or whatever that may be right like your, or your obligations that's the space where you can start attracting more authentic connections into your life if you know what you want and you know you follow that kind of goal as chris said that you know can be your north star or your dream even it doesn't really matter but i think that's that's um super important 
Um, there was one more thing I wanted to add to that before we call it a wrap. I've been very fortunate. Um, Chris is one of my very close friends and I have a couple, right? And I have been married before and coming out of a long-term relationship and redefining like what's important. This is a journey. I think being single oftentimes is challenging for people because at the end of the day, we long for human connections. But having human connections in this day and age becomes more and more tricky and convoluted. Part of the reason is social media. Part of the reason is maybe we all live longer. We have more interest. There's just more of everything that we have access to. And so navigating this becomes a lot easier if you have a few good people. In my case, it's friends because I've lost both of my parents already that you can like commiserate with and I don't like that word but that you can brainstorm with and really figure out like am I saying am I doing the right things or am I maybe stuck in this swipe left swipe right I'm liking people in the digital space trap right but I think that having a sounding board and also support that you're maybe not needy and you can focus on what you need to focus on is key is what I would say um, Chris it's been a real pleasure as always. The one thing I will say is um, let our audience briefly know where they can find you and we'll also drop it in the show notes. Well, I mean, I think my, my only uh, official thing where people can find me is, of course, Instagram. The Gram. The Gram. And, and your I, website, right? No website. No website, okay. No, I, I try to keep all of that. No, I, um, my Instagram is Chris in Hollywood. I, yeah. I, I had this to come very early, so I got the Chris in Hollywood uh, website, which the Chris and Hollywood profile. Yeah. 